Can you stop having a colonoscopy? Wouldn't you want to? Watch this video to learn when and why you can stop having a colonoscopy. First, it is important to understand that a colonoscopy is a cancer prevention procedure. Our goal is to find and remove polyps long before they have the opportunity to become cancer. We rarely find cancer at the time of a screening colonoscopy. So what's accomplished by removing a polyp? We help your future self to not have cancer. And that is the purpose of having a colonoscopy and critical to understand everything else in this video. Since the benefit of removing a polyp is to your future self, how long does it take for a polyp to grow into a cancer? Well, we don't know exactly, but we estimate that it's at least a decade or longer, and it's not as if all polyps become cancer. However, at the time of your first screening, we don't know what's been going on inside your colon. How many polyps might you have? How large have they grown? And so when you have your first colonoscopy at 45, we could discover anything. And our goal here is to clean out the colon to give you a fresh start. But this is not the last time that you should have a colonoscopy because you've got your whole life ahead of you, rich with opportunity for new polyps to grow and perhaps develop into a cancer. And so it's important that you return for future colonoscopies so that we can again look for any new growths and clear them out. If you've had prior polyps, then it's actually important that you not have any stool-based colon cancer screening. You've already proven that you grow polyps. And so you do your future self the biggest benefit when you take the time to have a colonoscopy and actually get any new polyps removed to prevent those polyps from having any opportunity to become a cancer. These colonoscopies that look for new polyps are termed surveillance colonoscopies. It's like weeding a garden and how often we have to clear out your garden depends on how many polyps we've found in the past. If on your last colonoscopy you had several, then we may need to watch you very closely in a few years, but if you only had a small one, then seven years. But if you've had a great number of polyps, or maybe one was big or had concerning features, then we may need to do this as soon as a year, though that's relatively uncommon. So after having regular colonoscopies, why would you eventually stop having them? Well, the simple and dreary answer is that eventually your future self will die, and that dead future self doesn't derive any benefit from removing a polyp today. I'm not sure anyone likes a colonoscopy to start with, but people do grow fond of the assurance that it provides to have a look and clear out any polyps. And so some people will be a little bit alarmed to stop because it makes them feel as if we think that they're gonna die soon, but that's not the case. Guidelines show that a person who's over the age 75, who's never had a single polyp, really is not gonna benefit from further colonoscopies. And that's because they've already proven that they don't have a colon that has a tendency to grow polyps, and therefore it's very unlikely that they're gonna develop an aggressive polyp in the future that would risk cancer. So what should you do if you've had polyps? Well, unfortunately, there are no clear guidelines about what to do in this circumstance. So you and your GI doctor are gonna to need to have a serious talk, and that's gonna to need to cover three key points. Foremost is, how aggressive do you wanna be about your own health care? Second, what's your overall health? If you're in overall good health and feeling robust and longevity runs in your family, then you've got a long timeline to benefit by continuing colonoscopies past the age of 75. And the third is, what is your risk for developing colon cancer? We estimate that by considering your family history and your own personal history of how many polyps you've had over several colonoscopies from the time you first started screening till present. For example, a patient with severe COPD who is on continuous oxygen is much more likely to die of lung disease than of colon cancer. So for these patients, the benefit of a colonoscopy is less and the risk of the procedure is higher because of those severe comorbidities. On the other hand, a patient who's 75 in which I just removed a three centimeter polyp and the pathology shows it has aggressive features has demonstrated that they are at a higher personal risk for developing colon cancer, and they're a person that I would want to continue to follow past the age of 75. Now, most situations fall in between these extremes, and ultimately there's no certain way to measure these risks. It is helpful to know as a rough guide that about 5% of the population will develop colon cancer in their lifetime. The other side of that coin is that 95% of the population will never have colon cancer. And so if you're a patient who's had several lifetime colonoscopies and has never had a polyp or only a couple of small ones, then statistically you're very likely in that larger group of the population who will never have colon cancer. And so trying to look for small polyps when you're 85 years old is a very little benefit to you. 
If you're an older person considering whether you need to have another colonoscopy, or perhaps you're the son or daughter of one, then I hope you found the information in this video helpful. Thank you for watching and be safe.